I welcome you, my dear friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. This is an installment in a series entitled Bible Definitions. And today we'll try to answer the question, what is faith? The Bible says the just shall live by faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Therefore, we must understand what is faith. Let us bow our heads and pray. Loving Father in heaven, take full possession of my mind, my physical faculties, dear God, and speak through me that the message might reach the hearts of those who are listening. Help me to speak simply, I pray, for your glory and for the blessing of those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. What is faith? In Hebrews 11, verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Then we must understand what is faith. What does it mean to exercise faith in God? We can begin at no better place than Genesis chapter 1. We'll read from verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Everything that exists, God created. Verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light stop and God said we are introduced to God's word the word said let there be light the Bible says there was light this is our introduction to the word of God and in that brief statement we learn if we read honestly that the word of God does exactly what it says let there be light there was light the entire chapter of Genesis 1 it uses this formula, and God said, and God said, and God said. We are introduced, my listening friend, in Genesis 1, not so much to what was made on what day, but we're introduced to the fact that God's word is the agent or was the agent of creation. God's word was the agent of life. God's word was not only the agent of creation, God's word is the agent of maintaining that creation. We learn this about God's word in Genesis 1. Now the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. So it is not by accident that Genesis 1 records not simply creation, but how creation came about. It came about by the word of God. Psalm 33, verse 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. What are the hosts of them? The heavenly bodies and also intelligent beings that inhabit heaven. They were made by the word of God. Now, we're told we must have faith in order to please God. What is faith? Let the Bible tell us what is faith. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. We'll read from verse 5. Matthew 8, reading from verse 5. We're trying to answer the question, what is faith? And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy and grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion saith unto him, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having servants under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10 of Matthew 8 tells us, And when Jesus heard that, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. What did Jesus mean? I have not found so great faith. Now Jesus was surrounded by Jews that did not believe he was the Messiah, despite the fact that the Old Testament points clearly to Christ as the Messiah. They did not believe the word. This non-Jew, this centurion, he believed in the word of God. 
And so he told Jesus, it's not necessary for you to come speak the word. Jesus called that faith. Then what is faith? Faith is taking God at his word. It is as simple as that. And if anyone complicates it, that person is taking you in the wrong direction. The Bible truths are simple. Faith is simply taking God at his word. And why should I take God at his word? Because the entire universe was made by the word of God. Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. There was light. Now, can you trust that word? The answer has to be yes. And the same word that made the light made the trees. They are a living thing. The same word that made the trees made the fish and the birds a living thing. The same word that made the fish and the birds made the land animals. The same word gave life to Adam and Eve, human beings. It is all by the word of God. Let me pause as I introduce this thought into your mind. Anything God does for you and for me, he does it through his word. The same way the universe was made by the word of God. When God forgives, he forgives by his word. That's why Jesus told the woman taken in adultery, thy sins are forgiven thee. When Jesus deals with demons, he uses his word. Matthew 8, 16. And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word. It is all done by the word of God. When Jesus raised Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. When Jesus raised the son of the widow of Nain, Luke 7, verse 14, he said, Young man, I say unto thee, arise. When he raised the daughter of the, 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 the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, he said, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. It is all by the word of God. And we're called to trust this word. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. When Christ comes a second time, he does not touch the earth, but he raises all the righteous dead buried in the earth. How does he do that? With his word. Now, faith is believing that word. How can you not believe a word that raises the dead? How can you not believe a word that created the universe? How can we not believe a word that made all the land animals, all the fish, all the birds, all the vegetation? How can we not believe a word that raised the dead man, Lazarus, from the grave? Faith is taking God at his word. My listening friend, if I sound earnest, I am earnest because it is so simple. And yet we try to complicate this thing called faith. Faith is taking God at his word. You cannot separate the word of God from faith. Remove the word, there's no reason for faith. There is no faith. The Bible says in Romans 1, verse 16, verse 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? The righteous shall live by faith. Who are the righteous? Who are the just? Those that are made right with God. And how are they made right with God? By a declaration from God that that person is right. And by the ongoing power of God in that person's life to preserve that right status with God, which we call sanctification. It is all done by the word. Let me say it again. What God offers you and offers me for an example. 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the word. Now believe that word when you say, Father, I am sorry for stealing or lying or whatever your eye may have done. When you say, I'm sorry, forgive me, you believe the word that says God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. The Bible says when we distrust God, when we do not exercise faith in God, we are virtually calling God a liar. Lack of faith, a refusal to take God at his word, is tantamount 
is equal to calling God a liar. First John chapter 5, verse 10. And so the Bible calls upon us, take God at his word. In Psalm 119, verse 133, the Bible says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Listen to those words carefully as we discuss faith. Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The Bible says it is not uh, inevitable that any sin should dominate your life or mine. Let not any iniquity have dominion. Let me not be ruled by any addiction. If I order my steps in the word of God, the word of God gives us assurance that we can be delivered from any addiction, any domineering sin in the life. But we must believe the word of God and we must receive that word within. How do I receive that word within? I surrender body, soul, mind, might, strength, understanding, everything of me. I surrender to thus saith the Lord. This is living by faith. And so the Bible says, by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Everyone comes into the world with some measure of faith, and God calls upon us now, exercise that faith. And as we exercise that faith, that faith grows and grows and grows. We grow in grace, we grow in faith. The question is, what is faith? Faith, my listening friend, is simply taking God at his word. And the word of God says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there be me meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Receive that word into you by returning that tithe and see God honor his word, because God cannot dishonor his word. He always stands by his word. That is how God developed a reputation of being a faithful God. He always stands by his word. God himself is the guarantee and the collateral for his word. What is faith? Simply taking God at his word. If God says something, believe it. Whatever he says, live your life by what God has said this is living by faith. This is how we please God. This is how Jesus Christ lived, because Christ said of himself, and he that hath sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. John 8, 29. Jesus said, I always please the Father. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so Jesus lived by faith in the word of his Father. My dear friend, I call upon you, I urge you, Learn to have faith in God's word by simply obeying him in the little things, the little things. And as you do that, your faith will grow so that you can follow God in the big things that challenge most people. We must have a faith that rises above the fear of death. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, speaking of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, the Bible says, these all die in faith. When you die in faith, you die victoriously. You die believing that one day Christ will come and raise you up. You must live by faith. We must die in faith. But the man or the woman who lives by faith and dies in faith will rise to a glorious life in the new world with the Savior. May the Lord bless you as you obey the word of God. Faith and obedience as Siamese twins joined at the heart. You cannot separate the two. May the Lord bless you as you seek by his unfailing grace to live by faith, which is a life of simple childlike obedience and trust in thus saith the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your simple word. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith, which we must use that that faith might grow. Bless all those who listen to God. Help them to realize that the joy of a relationship with you is based on living in total trust in your word, in thus saith the Lord, that the word that created the universe is the word by which we must live. Bless my listeners, dear God. Doubly bless their children. And may they join us again for the next installment under the series, Bible Definitions. I offer this prayer from my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and God bless you.